questions is, why is this happening? Why does God allow us to go through these hardships and these times of difficulty? What's the point? And of course, where is God in the midst of this crisis? And I think it's a valid question. It's an important question. And it's one that humanity has struggled with since the beginning of time. As we seek to understand God and live in relationship with God, preachers like me love to talk about God's mercy and love and kindness, all those pleasant and wonderful qualities that we seek out and that we hope in. We read them in scripture. Certainly he is all those things without a doubt. But God is also much more. God is also just and righteous and holy. He is mysterious. He is infinite beyond our comprehension. And the prophet Isaiah said his ways are not like our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 9. And because God's ways are not like our ways, because his thoughts and his will and his plans are so far beyond our understanding, we don't always get what's happening around us the way we would certainly like to. Let me tell you a couple of Bible stories that kind of illustrate that point. The book of Exodus tells the story of the people of Israel in slavery in Egypt. And Moses went down to liberate them and there were the plagues and the Passover and the Red Sea and into the wilderness. For the nation of Israel it was a dramatic cultural shift. It was beyond their comprehension whole different way of life and there was hardship and there was uncertainty and they resisted Moses and they resisted God and they struggled with the whole thing imagine imagine your life imagine you had lived in one place the only home you'd ever known and all of a sudden the familiar things of every day are taken away from you and you're a nomad living in a tent and yes people died and it was sad and it was difficult and it was heartbreaking and it was exactly within the will and the plan of God because God was doing something important among his people and then a generation goes by and a new generation is raised up and the new generation of Israel had spent their whole lives as nomads living in tents and Joshua says go into the promised land and go to war over it and you're going to settle down and you're going to be farmers and shepherds and live all your lives in one place and there was hardship and there was difficulty and people died in that time period as well and once again it was exactly within the plan and the will of God because God was up to something important years and generations went by kings came and went the prosperity of Israel went up and down and the nation of Babylon was threatening Israel putting pressure on them and eventually showed up at the gates of the city the nation was invaded, Jerusalem was sacked, and the people were taken captive, hauled off en masse to Babylon. Fear and anxiety and deprivation, all of it, part of the will and the plan of God, but the means by which God used to accomplish his will on the earth. So 70 years in Babylon, a couple of generations, and when the time came, the young people who had grown up their whole lives in Babylon, who only knew about Israel from the stories of the old people, they're sent back to resettle the land. Leave what you are comfortable and familiar with, go live a different life. And God was at work in that too. This 
epidemic, pandemic, coronavirus scare that we are living in. I think it could be one of those things. It's fearful. It's unnerving. Certainly there's a lot of pain and suffering and far too much death. And I don't minimize any of that in any way. But I am well confident God is at work in his people. I am assured that he is unfolding his plans on the earth and that his glory is going to be revealed. And I confess I do not understand all of it. I would love to say that with God in our lives, everything is going to be peachy keen and hunky-dory and there'll be no sadness or tragedy. But we know better than that. We know better. We will suffer. And we do experience hardships. And God is at work in them. And in my experience, I have found that very often God does his best work in us when we are weak and when we are humbled and even when we are in pain or in grief or disaster. In fact, the Apostle Paul went so far as to say in Romans chapter 5 that we glory in the tribulations because tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And the hope in God never disappoints. We glory in the tribulations. We accept it. We find a way to even embrace it. We sort out how to endure and thrive and overcome in the middle of it. Because we know that God is still at work in us. God is doing his growth in us, helping us to be people of grace and hope and love and mercy perseverance and character and hope will grow from those things now never in that verse in Romans 5 did Paul say that the tribulations are easy or enjoyable he never said that it was pleasant to go through because it's not and you know that and Paul knew that Paul knew what he was talking about he had his share of trials as well arrested and beaten and stoned with stones and shipwrecked and eventually executed but and I think because Paul endured and lived by faith in the midst of those things he was instrumental as a witness for the kingdom of God and we will be too if we're willing to persevere if we're willing to live by faith if we're willing to trust God even when we don't understand and even when it's hard we are in a bit of cultural shift the customs and practices of our society are changing and we don't know what part of these changes will be permanent and when we get to the other side of this mess we will very likely have a new kind of normal and we'll adapt and we'll adjust and in the due course of time we'll be fine my prayer is that we will be the better for it and that we'll be grateful for having had the opportunity to learn these lessons. A few years ago, I had a friend that was diagnosed with cancer. And it was bad. It was scary, it was painful, and his life was in jeopardy. Today, we're glad to say he's doing very well, in remission, and moving on. Once he got to the place where his health was recovering, once he got through the worst of the difficulties and came out the far side, he was able to say that getting cancer was one of the best things that ever happened to him. 
Now that's not to say that he wanted it or sought it, and that's not to say he would wish it on anyone else. It was awful. But because of that experience, he was able to learn some important lessons about life and about himself and about his relationships with the people around him that he never would have learned in any other way. I think that this time in our society and our lives can be like that. If we will learn well, if we will grow in grace, if we will overcome our fear, if we will expand our love for one another and our love for the Almighty God. Most of you remember the surge of faith and national pride that we experienced after the events of September 11th, 2001. And there was an outpouring of faith. There was a wave of patriotism. There was a renewal of our sense of community for about six months, maybe a year. And then in time, it was business as usual. Back to the same old, same old. Let's be better this time. Let's use this crisis time as a catalyst to be a better people and a better society because of all this. We're paying too high a price not to take these things, to use them to have some good come out of them. Tribulation produces perseverance, which grows our character, which increases our hope. Let our hope be found in Jesus Christ who loves us, who died for us, who rose again to give us eternal life. God bless you all. I will see you soon.